Welcome, everybody. Once again to Brunch with Bobby. I'm Jeff Finn here at Real Next, joined with Bobby Babis, and we're thrilled to have you back with us once again. We've got a, a full slate of value for you today, actually a double header today. And, and we started on Tuesday with the investment analysis with Dr. Jeff Fisher. If you didn't see that, it's in our user group and in our, our YouTube channel, which is really a foundation for a proposal or offering memorandum. Today, we're gonna, with Bobby, we're gonna talk about custom cover pages, presentations, and creating the flyers and the look and the feel of uh, what your proposal or OM looks like. And then at four o'clock today, we, we've got our user group with uh, David Monroe, CCIM, and he'll be talking about the rest of the content. How do you put it all together to make a winning proposal? And then next week, he'll uh, continue on with creating uh, BOVs, offering memorandums, and selling properties. Matt Smith will pick up on Thursday with uh, setting up your deal room and running a sales process. And then we have uh, Bobby coming back with us the end of the month for uh, CRM, again, with uh, setting up system tables and custom fields, customizing your, your system for your own personal use, as well as for those with teams and uh, uh, needing to manage permissions and, and user management and privileges, we'll, we'll cover that. But again, along the way, send in your questions, ideas, thoughts on topics that we might want to cover. And of course, throughout the session today, come in with your, your questions and we'll do our best to, to interact and engage. In addition to the brunch with Bobby and the the user group. We also have our webinar series continuing next week. We're really excited to have Blaine Strickland back. Blaine is a, a, a award-winning author. He wrote the book Thrive, which we presented in the fall. He's come out with a new book called Adapt. A disruption is coming. Are you ready? Another uh, fantastic book for the uh, commercial real estate industry and uh, more timely than ever. Um, I'm sure you'll, you'll love to hear what he's got to say. Some of the thoughts, uh, thought-provoking ideas he's got on how we can stay ahead of the curve and improve business processes to uh, win in the coming uh, market cycle. Uh, at the end of the month, uh, Tim Cray will be back with that Cray Cray, all of the, the latest updates to the system and um, again, fielding questions in that regard. But today, back to you, Bobby custom cover pages and presentations really uh, deep into market edge on how we can create incredible flyers and brochures and, and presentations to make you look good and to showcase your properties the best way possible. Let me get the controls over to you and we'll be good to go. Awesome, thank you, Jeff, and thank you everybody for joining. Um, I'm Bobby of Brunch with Bobby fame, and as Jeff said, today we're going to be taking a dive into Market Edge on the proposal side of things, uh, specifically with a focus on the uh, custom cover pages and custom pages that are, are new to our system. So, um, and as people have asked, don't worry on those sessions where I'm not actually involved, I did give them permission to actually use the name Brunch with Bobby, so that's... You know, <laughs> There's no issues there. Well, you get, you get a slight royalty out of it, Bobby. I know that, but we'll... well, I mean, there's a reason I said yes. Um, yeah, of course. Um, I mean, it's either a royalty or some form of stroking my ego, and having my name on it does that. So, um, but yeah, so we're going to go into the proposal editor. I'm just going to use Queen Creek Marketplace because it's difficult for me to say every single time. And I've got a, a very basic setup here. And David Monroe is going to be doing the user forum later this afternoon, and that's going to take a much deeper dive into a lot of the aspects of generating the proposal, uh, kind of the why you want to add this section, this section, and this section, and you know what makes up the different types of proposals you do in the system. This is going to be more of the how-to on a few of the different uh, parts of it, uh, basically making sure that your package actually looks the way that you want it, has a good looking, eye-pleasing cover page, as well as being able to generate custom pages, which can either be used as internal pages for you know, a multi-page proposal, or you can actually just do a quick custom page 
in order to have a quick flyer for the property that you can either send to a PDF document or print out as necessary. So as you see here, we've got our, our cover page up right now, and I'm actually gonna just zoom out a little bit to make it a little easier to work with for a moment, but I'll kind of zoom in and out. I'm used to doing that with this monitor, uh, but yeah. So first off, you can actually select exactly which cover page you want from the top button here. So uh, you've got your cover sheet over here and clicked on it, and then you'll see select cover page. So when you click on that, uh, this is actually something that's been updated very recently to have thumbnails of what each of these are actually gonna look like uh, before actually selecting them. So at the very top, it's actually separated into three sections, although a lot of people will only see or it's actually four sections, but a lot of people will only see three of them. At the top, you're gonna to see the ones that you've marked as favorites, and you see there's a little star on each of these different thumbnails, allowing you to just click on that in order to move it from the section it's in up to the section at the top. And if you decide that you're no longer besties with one of these favorites that you've put at the top, you can just click on the star there to remove it from the top and put it back in its rightful place in the default uh, category. So some people might see a custom section as well, although most people won't see a custom section involving multiple different company brandings. But this uh, shows that with uh, different companies, you can actually have custom company branding that's use usable across multiple uh, offices and can be used by multiple people in the office. So this is something that we do offer. And if you are interested in that, I suggest you reach out to your sales rep uh, about us creating custom branding, which is custom cover pages, as well as the internal headers and footers for you. Uh, so uh, this is kind of just showing what we've done in the past so far. And uh, But a number of you, if you've never actually gone with that service, you wouldn't see the custom section. It would go directly to portrait where you see, God, I don't even remember how many we have now, 30 almost, 26 different uh, uh, cover pages in different formats and you can kind of see you know we got one photo info on the left side zigzag photo with the company so they're all really you know just different iterations of the same thing but each of these are also going to be customizable within them so um, I'm actually going to switch to the one photo eh, let's actually continue with the one photo circle right I just kind of like this one and you can kind of play with the different aspects of it as well to make it stand out a little bit more so uh, Continuing along the top here, you actually see this highlight editable fields. So you can actually edit a lot of this information directly from on the page now. Uh, so if you actually click on that, you'll see little squares around the different editable sections. It can be a little difficult to see on a, a screen share, but uh, there is a rectangle, I guess not a square, a rectangle around these uh, different highlightable sections. So what that means is you can actually go in here and we can change the name from like Queen Creek Marketplace to Offering Memorandum. So we're going to you know, use this to generate an OM in this instance. Uh, and then we can put whatever we want in here. So I've just put that it's in Central Queen Creek in a high growth area. It automatically put in the city name and then the actual building name. Although we can actually change this to... Yeah, there's not really a to do that and then you can also then see the logo so the logo is also something that is now customizable within the proposals and in this case we probably would actually want to use a different logo the uh, transparent orange and red logo just it's hard to kind of actually see on here so when you actually click on that it's going to bring up your logo library so Right now we have our you know our system that I've actually populated with a number of them, but we see a number of real max ones. And you can kind of get an idea. A lot of you are going to have different company logos that are available to you that are, you know, in different colors, making it to where it's a lot easier to have one that'll stand out on the specific background that you choose. So you can just click on the upload button here and go browse for one of your actual company logos. Uh, your marketing department hopefully would have that, or you've, you know had someone create your uh, logos and a lot of the time you'll have those different colors so in this case I think the white one is the one that actually looks good yeah so that makes it a lot easier to see the company logo from there uh, 
allowing you to, you know, really go to town with uh, what you customize on these. And then of course, if you prefer, you can then, you know, switch your actual cover page around. So if you decide instead you want the three photos with highlights, you can then select that one. And notice that the colors are actually differing from what you see on the background. So this is just showing some examples, but these colors that actually appear on these cover pages are also customizable. So coming back up to the top here, you have a colors drop down, and so I've basically selected colors that are relatively close to our uh, um, our company colors, and so. But you can actually change. So we see the red color here. So if we want that to actually appear as blue, or I guess that's more of a indigo. When we click off, it's now going to show that lovely purple color for us. We can then do the same thing with headers and footer colors, although this specific cover page doesn't actually use those different uh, section, uh, different, uh, yeah, those different section heads and stuff. So that is going to make a difference though to the internal pages as well. So your cover page is going to end up matching the different reports that you add to it. So now if we go into the marketing plan section, we're going to see it reflecting that purple and orange. And in the, this case, it just makes the text in the actual report purple. Uh, investment details probably going to be very similar to the same thing. Yeah, the text is in purple, but we still have that orange color. So it does make a difference what you actually choose for these. So I can actually do this, make that black. And do this, and let's say make it. And, and Bobby, just note Solid. that if you have exact color keys, you can type in the number, and that will give you your yeah. exact color match. That you're. So that I, that was actually what I was going to do next. Yeah. So if you actually have one of your logos uh, on a web page, I actually have a a browser extension. So let's say I wanted to use this exact red color at the top here. That actually makes sense for our report since were you know that's actually part of our color branding so i have a color eyedropper that you just basically can hover over one of the colors on your browser so if you opened up your company's web page for example you could hover over the different areas of your comp uh, company logo and click on it and it'll actually give you the hex code for it which you can then just copy here and then i can just hit escape and then go back here and paste so now I've got that exact red color that matches this here at the top. So there's a, a number of ways to actually get that, that hex code for the colors. But yeah, good thing to definitely point out there, Jeff. All right, let's see. I guess the remainder of those don't really. So uh, in addition to that though, uh, this one actually has multiple photos. So Again, if we click on highlight editable fields, we'll see the different areas we can actually highlight. So this one has a lot more uh, stuff to play with where you can actually go in here, give it a different title. Uh, we can you know, give it different bullet points about the property. Uh, of course, we'll wanna change our logo, probably in this case, back to the orange and red one. It looks a lot better in this case. But then we can click on the photo here and that's gonna give us all of the photos from our photo library which that's gonna be the same as this button right here if you wanted to upload photos that are usable across the entirety of the report. So for example, I can use this photo right here. So let's actually uh, add a couple of those, but when we actually select the photos in here, they're still gonna be usable in different areas. So when we go to make a custom page, for example, that's gonna actually show up with the exact same photos that we have available here. So I'm also gonna just do the cartoon aerial there. So you have a, a lot of room to play with now, um, basically being able to select and resize each of these. So if you wanted to kind of show it like that, uh, you can also add or remove a link directly from here. So that way when you actually export this as a PDF, the photo itself can actually be a link to a website. Although of course, if you print it out, I wouldn't expect that to actually work if you tap on it, but at some point I'm pretty sure that will end up happening. So, you know, I joke now, but I'm gonna be made, uh, made to 
realize that's not uh, ideal. Uh, and then you can also just choose to fit the photo. So it will actually make sure that the entirety of the photo displays in that square, um, or you can expand the photo to make it to where it actually fills the full space. Uh, that's most of what I wanted to cover on custom cover pages. I mean, the other thing that I didn't really go into is that there's a, a set number of landscape uh, cover pages on the bottom as well. So those are just going to be, you know, printable in landscape or ex uh, saveable in landscape. You might, you might want to just pop up and show a few of the the new examples that we have. We've done a, a, a like yeah. ten or so really nice new presentation formats. And when you change to landscape, it changes the presentation to landscape. So it's not just the the cover, but the whole orientation. Uh, Goes, okay, goes good. Out. I wasn't actually sure if that was implemented yet. I know uh, I was talking to Tim about that last Friday, I think. Uh, but yeah, so like this one basically gives you an, a, a very photo uh, oriented cover page. And of course, at this point we'll very much need to uh, change the logo to something else. It doesn't really pop as well, but The, the other thing that's coming that's not in here, you'll you'll see it in the custom page, but it will be adopted for the cover page, is the ability to pick what we call a, a widget. So a, a photo might be one of the, the widgets, text would be another, data like the property details would be another, a map, um, and you can then pick and select in any of those boxes that are formatted on the page what you want to put where and you could have a full array of you know photo map data bullets text and and size that with headers and and, and uh, other information that you'd want to display Yeah, so actually, I just went into one of those custom pages, and I'm not going to lie, I, I hadn't actually ever looked at this uh, custom page that I created in Landscape, but it just looks straight up better. Uh, I'm extremely glad that it actually now has the ability to do full landscape reports, because a lot of the uh, the different reports just make a lot more sense in that format, especially depending on how much data you really want to show. So uh, that is a lot more control and something I've heard a lot of people want for a, a long period of time. But uh, that brings us to those custom cover pages. So uh, this is just an example that I created and you can kind of see, you could easily use this as sort of a flyer for the property. You might, uh, you know, just create a quick single page that you can then publish to a PDF document. Uh, or you can use it as, uh, you know, one of the pages within your report that kind of gives you a little bit more control over over what the detailed description box is going to show. Like you can, you know, customize these a lot more. So I'm going to go ahead and show you just start to finish creating one of these custom uh, custom pages. So first off, you'll now see a uh, a new item here that says customizable page. And as with any of the reports in the available report section or the section page, you can just drag and drop this into where you want that custom page to appear in the order here. And of course you can also just always drag and drop it as you need. So when you initially add it, you're gonna see the full page option, but before you actually go selecting which widget you want, which is what the selector box is for, you can go up here and choose select layout. And this is going to have a number of different options where on the right hand side, it's going to show you kind of a, a basic idea of what it's going to look like. So full page, that doesn't give you a really good idea of what this is doing. But when you go to two rows, you'll now see there are two different rows, each with its own widget within it. Two columns, same concept, but the different uh, widgets are going to take up half the page vertically. Two rows, one column and then two columns two rows, two columns, one column. So you can kind of see what each of these are, are gonna look like on the right-hand side. So the idea is you pick out basically how many different widgets you want to have appear on there. And what I'm saying will probably make a little bit more sense in a moment once we actually select one of these and get to work. 
So I'm actually just gonna, let's just go with two rows, one plus two, which is exactly what that custom page that I did on, uh, as the example was. So when we hit apply, actually let's go back into there because uh, there's two more options, well, three more options really. First off, you can give it an actual title. So let's say we wanted to just give it the title of the property name itself. Uh, of course, you can you know, give that whatever title you would like to appear on the page. And then you can also choose to display or not display the actual header and footer, basically these gray and green or whatever colors you choose uh, sections there. So that would allow you to not display you know, your, con uh, your contact info, email and phone number, as well as your secondary agent and the property info at the top. Uh, you can also turn off enable padding between sections which will make it to where the photos will actually kind of blend into one another or the sections will as well so when you hit apply you're going to then see those selector widgets here so when you drop that down you're going to see these 10 different options available to you map paragraph bullets photo text property fields so each of these are going to have different information for what actually shows up in this box so for example if you choose map it's gonna give you a map of the property centered on where you are. Now, beyond that, there's also gonna be a few more options. For example, you can actually zoom out on the map and wherever you actually zoom to, when you export it as a PDF, that's what's gonna end up displaying. In addition to that, you can also change it from a roadmap to either terrain, satellite, or hybrid. So you can have the map appear like that there. So other widgets are then selectable by using these there we go, these drop downs here. So you can also technically, I guess, make two maps on the same one. That way you have one that is satellite and one that is street view. And then, yeah, I guess it's road. And then here you could add, for example, a paragraph where you have a title at the top and then you can just enter the text that you want. Or whatever it actually is. Um, now, if you decide that you don't actually, uh, I'm trying to remember how to remove this type of section. I think we'll have to come back to that. Um, but yeah, so if we wanted to change this to instead show a photo, and of course, the same photos that appeared from our photo library are gonna appear in the custom pages as well. Basically, anywhere where you have the ability to select custom photos, you're gonna have access to all of those same photos directly from here. Sorry, my computer is being a, a little bit taxed at the moment so it's kind of messing up here and there bobby just mentioned with those property fields and the um, available space and those bottom sections that they're all pulling straight from the database so all of the information yeah, was, yeah that's what i was trying to get up was yeah. uh, i was trying to change the paragraph over to the uh, property uh, fields, which actually are available directly on the uh, the home tab here. Or the well, general. Yeah. On the general tab, <laughs> my bad. So anything that you enter in here, uh, same thing for the property description, property overview, and location overview. Those are all also entered directly on the general tab. So you can use the information that you've already entered directly from this widgets and really be able to save some time uh, not having to do double entry on those. And that actually can come straight from CRM. So if you publish it from CRM, it'll come right into your your market edge so that you can go right into the, the flyer production, presentation production. trying to think of, I mean honestly it, it's not the most complicated uh, thing the in the world. The other thing to mention is on that top left of your uh, your menu widget bar not there the, uh, the, the above property description 
there's a little drop down number you have one so that's for one paragraph if you want multiple paragraphs you can do that so you have different headers and and then section descriptions you can you know, obviously change type background color and on same thing with bullet lists you can have multiple bullet lists based on that and and then with that with where you are now you can pick and resort the fields change them as you'd like so if you might want to have an undisclosed price you can just take out the the price or put to uh, best offer whatever you'd like to to say there even though it's coming from the database you can you can tweak and modify yeah everything that shows up here while it does pull the information you can customize it on the report which also does not change the information on the general tab so it basically gives you a way to you know actually customize the output without having to change the actual information that might be valuable for other purposes so um yeah a couple of questions while we're we're, we're here can can you create your own custom cover pages that are branded and uploaded them so you know, when when bobby was in the original section uh there there's a a favorite section which are the the ones that you you like the most we have our own library i think there's 40 or so that are pre-built in the system and then if you go to the custom section bobby the um we we built some for nai and svn and marcus and cb and others that are are there so why don't you pull up just that nai long island one you'll see that 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 um so that that's formatted and structured exactly the way they they wanted the the presentation to look like. So you can set the the graphic image. You can set where your header is going to be, where your bullets are going to be, where your agents' names are going to be, and all of that can be customized uh, for your your covers. Um, yeah, and so that, that it looks like that's a, a common question the templates are something we're going to talk about later so terminology is a little bit different the the template is actually the that side menu bar where it says included reports you might have 5 10 20 80 pages in there and that is a template that you can then save you can have a template which is a one page flyer a four page brochure uh, a 50 page proposal or offering memorandum you could have a leasing flyer one of the things that we didn't show was that if you show availabilities under your your um, your tenant roster those would pop up into your your presentation as available spaces so in addition to having a flyer for the a property for sale you can have a property with all of its detail here's what's available for lease and then you can add behind it the floor plans, maps, and other information within the presentation. Um, so, uh, and then you can uh, you can customize within that that available space table as as well. Uh, there's a question on the uh, custom form again. So if you just go back to the custom page and show the different variations to that, and then Maybe pick a, a different one and show how you, you, you build the build the page. So you select the layout. These are all the different layouts of a page. You know, you'll see this the the grid to the right. You pick the grid that you want, and once you select it, all of those boxes are then editable with those different choices. When you get when you go into a text, Bob, let's just pick text. And now, what are the options that you have with text? So there's a size. You can change the point size. You can change the the uh, the font color. We don't have a font library, but that's something to to come. So we um, we have yeah. Uh, left right center indentation and and what's to the far right what, what do you the um you can you can pick color of the font and you can also pick color of the the background 
that's behind the, the field. And then if you wanted to change it, you, you've got the ability to, to change. The photo library, it's a good, good question. Uh, the photo library is property specific. So we don't have a photo library for all of your, your properties in one place. They'll get too cluttered, we thought. So we keep them basically as a folder for that property, but you can upload, uh, upload a, a group of, of photos to that project. Your logos work across your portfolio. So if you have a white, black, and color colored logo, um, that would be available everywhere. You only need to input that once, and that's in, in your system settings. You set up your system colors in, in your logo, and that is good if you need to change it because you might want to show a client color or show something branded for them. You can upload their logo and, and use their logo and, uh, and their colors. Um, this looks like build out. Is it linked to build out? No, this is a replacement or an alternative to to build out. It's an integrated workflow in the Real Next framework uh, for not just proposals and flyers, but also the financial analysis. So within Real Next, you have the full suite of tools from CRM, presentation, financial analysis, and marketing, and we able we're able to deliver it for an unbelievably low cost structure. So when you look at something like Apto, it's $129 per user, I think $149 um, on, a, on a monthly basis. Build out $150 per user on their, their uh, basic subscription. Uh, if you add financial analysis and other, you're up to $400, $500, $600, depending on the package. We deliver all of it for $129 per user per month. So the full suite of Realnex, CRM, our transaction manager, our financial analysis, which has comparative lease and investment, as well as the proposal builder, the presentation, flyers, brochures, plug in for your website to showcase your properties on your, your website, as well as the email marketing campaign at a incredible cost savings, which I know today is more important than ever. Yeah, the ability to just completely cut out your uh, email marketing is kind of one of the, the biggest things that comes as a shock to people. And uh, Bobby, when you publish, what happens with the, the publisher? So you created a, a flyer, you can then do what? So you can either preview slash save. So that's going to basically put it all into one document that as you scroll through, and of course I, I selected one of the other templates, so it's gonna be completely different than what I had because I didn't remember to save it. So don't be like me, remember to save your templates before you load another one. Although this is probably not the worst looking one in the world to go through, but when you preview slash save, you can do this, uh, which gives you a number of different options at the bottom. You can either print from here, you can download the actual PDF document, uh, you can turn down or up the volume on, uh, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's a little sound going on here. Uh, you can also select items in here and so on. So basically gives you kind of a PDF toolbar where you can then come in here and actually save the file and have it download the PDF document for you. There's also an e-publisher where you create a link which can be embedded, emailed and, and sent. And with the e-publisher, whenever you change, so let's say there's a change of price or there's a change of vacancy or new rent roll, when that's changed and the client looks at that the next time, they'll have all of the updated information. Yeah, the link will always remain the same, but anything that you change on the proposal itself updates the e-publish e every time. Pretty awesome and relatively underused too. So definitely uh, like it comes up useful quite a bit of the time for exactly that reason. Like anywhere where you don't have to constantly come back in here, click publish, click preview, save, or email every time you make an update that just 
you know, it becomes exponential over the course of time. So we're going to go through the full detail of putting it all together this afternoon. But uh, Bobby, you might, you might want to show just along the left, what are the different types of reports that are included? And before you, you say that, I've got a great shout out from, from Guy uh, Levingston. He said, uh, these, addition, these new additions uh, enabled me to recently put together a sales marketing package for a two and a half million dollar building and present it to my clients, secure one list secure the listing in one afternoon thanks for the good work thanks guy we appreciate that is it best uh is the best way to customize the demographics format so we have demographics they they are simple generic demographics one of the things that you'll see this afternoon with dave monroe he and for anybody who is a ccim and you have site to do business bring in the esri um, demographics again we give you basic demographics but there's a lot of more of you know, a more sophisticated demographic, sociographic, and other models that can be put in. We have the ability to add any number of PDFs that you can just drag and drop and add them in as attachments. So you can put your company brochure, your pers your 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 bio, your transaction history, your profile, your 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 marketing plan proposal. All of that sort of stuff comes in as part of the the presentation but the uh, de again de demographics are out of the, the box photos maps and uh, I'm sorry you know, aerial photos and uh, and demographics are are, are pre-populated but you can add additional details if you'd like to does real next offer any tech assistance we can pay for who can handle all these packages together do we I know any uh, TA that offers this type of agent support. Great question. Thanks, uh, Mary. We are planning to add a bank of uh, marketing assistance. Right now, we we do a limited amount, but we don't have a team scaled up for th uh, this type of of work but we will be working on it so uh, we know that uh, your time is valuable and to have that type of leverage resource where someone who's expert in all of this can can do it for you it will be better so we're we're currently um, interviewing to to build a, a team of, of people and probably i shouldn't say probably we would have had that in place if not for the changes in the world events over the past month or so so i would say that as we come out of the the cycle will have that as a service bureau that you'll be able to tap into and take advantage of. Another shout out from Frankie, thank you. Uh, recently secured five deals using the proposals and OMs. One of the things that's great and, and what I, I find always tremendously valuable, Bobby showing the report, but what, what clients like to see is it's not just how great you are, but it's what are you gonna do for them? and that what again we we show in this is the work that's going to be done with the timelines in CRM, with the marketing plan that we put into this, with the client reporting and, and output that comes back. You're showing that you you just don't have success and but you have a process and a process workflow that's accountable, measurable, and, and reportable so that you can uh, deliver against that, as well as using the comps and the financial analysis it's not just uh, here i i think the property is worth 10 million dollars but it's worth 10 million dollars because of this discounted cash flow analysis these comps in the market etc that substantiate value and, and do something beyond what you can get from costar everyone has costar data and everyone's got the same data but if you have your comps with your specific knowledge of those comps and what's different about them and what the particular circumstance around that comp, why did it sell for that price? Was there an unusual need to sell? Was it distressed? Was it uh, somebody was in a 1031? So was it high or low? You can make adjustments and calibrate around that and then use that calibration to, to really get precise and, and to substantiate. Okay, can you speak more about how to integrate our properties into our website? Bobby, if you would, if you just why don't you go to mdl.com and, and show that or any others that you, you might be familiar with, but MDL's got a good one and we can show it's a simple widget. Once you have your listings in CRM, they can all be published into 
uh, or you, you put them right into the marketplace and they're available throughout your system in a sort of a full life cycle from CRM and business development to when you want to do the analysis to when you win business to when you list and publish. So once it's listed and published in the marketplace, it's available on your website. We give you a widget. It's one line of code you plug into your website. There's three or four different views that you can take, and uh, this is a full full display view. There's others that are uh, sort of side by side map and and other. But see the search engine on the top. Just just keep keep the search. There's like a limited search for clients, or we have a more detailed search. You have different map or satellite view, and then when you pop pop open a um, listing you'll see the full detail of a listing so if you pop open one of their properties for sale or lease you get a little detail get a little summary then you can get a street view or a map view or get into our full listing site the um it, it, a couple of things the, the the this listing widget plugin if you have five suite subscriptions is included, so you, you get it and uh, uh, it's just included with your subscription. If you if you don't, it's like, um, I think it's 495 for up to five agents, 795 for up to 15 and then 1195 per year for 15 plus. But uh, most people who use this use the full suite and have a, a, a team of people using it. So it, it's, it's Part of the part of the package that you get with the um, the team based suite. Uh, one of the cool things in here as well within this the listing engine is the deal room. So you can uh, we'll be talking about deal rooms next week, but you can link your deal room. So think about this: you do your analysis and put together your your OM. You create a flyer. You can e you put your property up in the marketplace with a secure deal room with all of your due diligence documentation. You can send out an email marketing campaign to your CRM list of best uh, apartment buyers. They come into your deal room, sign the NDA, download what documents they, they want. You monitor all of their activity. You see what they're looking at when they're looking at it. And you know that there's a dozen people engaged in that. You set up your call for offers, open up the, the deal room for bidding, and you close and run a, an accelerated sales process. There's also an, an icon there for, for 3D. We, we have 3D models, so if this project looks like a, it looks like rendering, it doesn't really exist, you could pop open a 3D model that we've created for this project and take virtual tours of space, either a floor plate that uh, is to be remodeled and reconfigured or a new project from, from the ground up. We do the 3D modeling for less than the cost or at, at the cost of what you would typically do a rendering. So if you're going to do two or three renderings of a project, we can do a 3D model and you get unlimited renderings out of it because each any visual vantage point that you have of that 3D model, you can take a, a snap, you really take, you, you just click uh, Control P and you've got a rendered photo that you can use in your image library. Can we restrict visitor to sign ND, a CA before uh, coming into the uh, deal room? Of course, so the deal room is built with security. It's built with seven levels of security. The The first one is to sign a, a CA. You might have a, you know, you send out a teaser so they get that. And with that teaser, you have a link to your deal room. It will give you, it, it'll require them to sign in and based on who they are, when you've sent out the link, they, they'll come in at a level one security. And as they go through a process, perhaps as they signed a, uh, you know, put in an LOI, you might give them then access to all of the, the more in-depth detail that you, you want to have uh, accessible. And as they've done that and you want to get into the bidding process, there could be another tier and for different people, you have different tiers and easy, easy control. Uh, a, a dashboard here, which monitors who or who's the participant, uh, what they've looked at, when they've looked at it, and a document manager for you to load, populate. You can actually drag and drop a full nested folder of your, your content. So 
if you have 100 documents all in 20 different folders, you just take that off your desktop, drag it up, and uh, load it in, and your, your deal room is set. And you even pull the contacts directly in from your CRM. Yep, and then if, you know, feed it feed it back in based on their their activity. Um, do you have uh, to add a lease abstract page under lease reports? Ideally, showing two columns side by side. We didn't go in, but if you want to go into uh, lease lease report, you get out of um, investment and go into the lease tool. And we do five by five property lease by lease comparative analysis. Again, those spaces could come from CRM if you have the detail there, or you can enter it directly here. Uh, I don't know if you have good data in this or not, but just go into a show a summary. I sincerely doubt it. <laughs> but go with the lease data, yes, up, up, up at the top. You can you can model each lease. And then you'll see you've got Starbucks, Ulta, you've got the different leases there. The, those are the five leases. Now, if you go into a summary, you see a pretty cat, and uh, you should have, if you had good data, you'd have the all of the, the properties there coming in, in a side-by-side -side analysis. We, we don't, don't have on that, that on the schedule yet, but let's do that. Let's add a, a comparative lease analysis uh, session like coming Might forward. Be. Oh, this is actually uh, from the tenant rep side, though. Yeah, so we do it two different ways. We, we give you a, a tenant, uh, a tenant lease by lease, and a from a landlord's perspective, we give you a, a, a lease analysis. Uh, possible to link incorporate Matterport. We we do not have any integration with Matterport. I, I don't know what the file format is from Matterport, but certainly we have. The ability to add links to um, both the PDF that comes out of Market Edge as well as in Marketplace, the ability to add links into the uh, property listing. But here, yeah, this is a good one. You can you can sort of just scroll down. Here's a, a good summary of of uh, a comparative lease analysis. Besides 3D renderings, you have a project. Uh, do we create a group? Do we create site plans? No, we do not create site plans. There, uh, there are third-party services that have uh, boundary lines and 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 site data. We can take that in and use that as part of our presentation, but we don't create the the rendering. Although in our mapping feature, Bob, if you want to go into the custom map in uh, the investment tool side, not in the leasing side. And if you create a custom map, you have uh, drawing tools within the the map, so you can you can put uh, this is a I guess. It's not the right one. There's there's a, a custom map that gives you the ability to uh, annotate the map, draw on the map, find competitors. It's the business map. I'm sorry, not the custom map. Business map. Yep, my my mistake. So okay, under, a under a business map, you can blow it up if you wanted to. As you drill down into to an area and you wanted to put a boundary line, you can highlight it and mark the, the boundary of of a property. Uh, just just drill down deeper into it so you, you'll see how as you get in closer and closer to the the property you've got a drawing tool over to the the right and you could just you could mark the boundary of it so it's not coming from um, county record file although you could extract from county records and pull pull that data this is just a, a drawing tool on top of of the map
there's a um, next question. Is there a way to lock current projects so that any future changes uh, will not alter current settings? We are working on uh, two different things. One on the, those custom pages. Right now, the, the custom page is built one at a time for each project. We will enable you to create a, a library of those that you've customized, created, and want to save. And again, have those that are your favorites. And, and instead of having the 20 that we've got, here's the three that you use. And here's the map. Here's the, the photo. Here's the text. So you set it up once, save it, and that's part of your, your library. And then uh, for the, the project itself to be able to, to save. And yeah, I, I don't know lock maybe not the right word but to to save and then to retrieve right now you save and retrieve but if you change it it's changed you don't have uh, version control so to, to be able to go back to to a prior version uh, but is uh, yet to come but it's on the roadmap for the property website under search listings does search only search our listings or can it search the real next marketplace for any listings from say LoopNet uh, from within our site. We've we've de uh, we found there there's regulatory issues with that and showcasing other people's listings on your website unless there's agreement across an organization. So we do not uh, we do not search other listings, but we you can allow somebody to search from your website. The real next full marketplace and yet in that case they would see the other agents so you might lose control with that what we have in inside of the real next marketplace is what we call a client watch list so that um, the watch list enables you to run a search for a client so if they inquire and let's say they're looking for 20,000 square foot of office space in the downtown market you can run that search that'll create a report it sends a link to them and basically creates a private portal for that client all branded by you for them it strips out the third party agents and, and just shows the the client you as the contact person to find out more about any of those properties and then you can flag uh, those properties for notification to get updates if anything changes, and you can alert your client if anything changes on any of those properties. Not seeing the template tab on mine. Uh, check um, not if you need to have the full suite. So the real next is it, it's modular. Some people have subscriptions to the CRM, some to Market Edge, and some to Marketplace. So you would need to have a subscription to Market Edge. So, it, and it really is, you know, an incredible value to move from one module to the full suite. The individual module, for example, of, of a CRM is $79 for Market Edge, it's $79. And for Marketplace, it's $79 or, or $59, depending on when and, and um, when you subscribed. The, Full suite is 129. So if you already have one of the modules, call it the CRM, and you want to upgrade to the full suite, you move from one from $79 per user per month to 129. So for $50 a month, you get the full power of not just Market Edge, but also the the marketplace. And if you're a CCIM, you get a discount on that. So there's a 20% discount for um, candidates and a 40% discount for designees. With a watch list, do you get an alert? In, in, inside of Marketplace, there's all kinds of metrics and statistics of viewership of your listings, as well as the email campaigns that you send and the watch list that you send. So yes, yes, you do get, uh, you don't get an alert. You have a dashboard where you can see who looked at what. We're, we're working on alerts and notifications, but they, they they don't. It doesn't ping you in your um, as an SMS or as a as an email at this point in time. You need to come and look. But when you do come and look, it tells you who looked at what, and you can see you know what they looked at, and you have their information so that you can uh, reach out to them. 
and that's a list typically coming from your CRM, so you know exactly who, what, and where, and how to how to reach out to them. There's also the ability to reach out to not with the watch list per se, but with our email campaigns out to the full real next community to add and build to your prospect list. So if you have a listing that might need broader exposure, you can send that listing out to 100,000 people that have registered with real next looking for different types of, of property. And again, a very, uh, it's, I think $159 per campaign to, to run a real blast out to that market. What do you got to wrap up, Bobby? Because I think we are coming up to the top of the hour. I think we've exhausted the questions so far. So any final questions, pop them in. Uh, that pretty much covers me. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm much more, uh, you know, in tune with the CRM side of things. And I mean, definitely don't forget that side where, you know, you can do all of the data entry for most of the things that come into the general and and even the income tab. Um, if you fill out the spaces and so on in your CRM, you can have all of this just copied in directly for you by just clicking on the analyze button on a property record. So more, of, more and more of those just things are- wrap up, I'll just huge. go there into that one, because that's a instant uh, process, not not copy, it just, it just pushes everything across. The uh, the database also another too, Mike, really while quick. you're just while you're pulling that up the the question about the the database we we have a, a database that is a a combination of of brokers and and investors it's uh, a little bit heavier weighted to to brokers but there's a, a large percentage of in, investors and as you know many broker owners are also investors uh, as well so it, it does cross the the gamut. So we just press that right. analyze button. Yep. Yeah, I wanted to find one that actually had at least one space in it. Yep. So anything that was filled in on the CRM automatically got filled in on the investment and analysis. And when we go over to the income tab, we should see those two leasable spaces from within there, one of which actually had lease information and one of which did not. Right, and if you click available with that under that little available side to the left, those would show up on your space availability reports when you want to create a property flyer for leasing space. Thanks, Frank, for the shout out. Appreciate it. I've used Act, Client Look, and Build Out. The current Real Next is by far the best. Kudos to the team. We love it. Thank you very much. Appreciate everybody's time. We are at the top of the hour. Great job, Bobby. Uh, I thought we we're going to be done in 15 minutes but uh, <laughs> there is a, obviously a, talker. a lot more to cover. Uh, look, great questions from everyone. Again, uh, Dave Monroe at four o'clock today, Eastern time to take a, even a deeper dive into creating presentations that win business. Uh, more to come with Brunch with Bobby next week and uh, Blaine Strickland with Adapt. Invitations will be coming out to register. Hope you're all doing well, uh, taking advantage of the time and we will speak with you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all.